Hello and welcome back to Sweet Spot DFS. This is a review for the 2020 Honda Classic where Sung JM is your winner. It was a pretty good week. I had Sung Jae in the thumbnail for the lineup construction video. I also did have Ricky, so obviously that didn't do well, but Ricky had a chance to make the cut. He did look good on Friday's round. And then in, a, in the preview video, I had Tommy as my uh, thumbnail. So I was on the top two guys in the tournament. Uh, it felt good. I made my money back, so it wasn't like a, a huge win for me, but anytime you break even is, is a win in uh, daily fantasy sports. So that's perfect. Um, before we get into the video, I'd like to remind you that you can watch this video in a faster speed. Go ahead, if you're on desktop, drag your cursor over my face or anywhere else on the video. There's going to be a gear icon somewhere down here. Click that gear icon, find playback speed, and select whatever speed you're comfortable watching. I recommend 1.5 times. Um, if you're on mobile, you're gonna see in the top right corner, if you're on Android, that is, there's gonna be three dots that make a vertical line. Click on that, uh, find playback speed. Again, same thing. If you're on Apple, I'm not sure what it looks like. It might just be one dot, I have no idea. Uh, but either way. That will make it faster for you guys to watch the video. And another way to make it faster is I have timestamps down in the description. Go ahead, find whatever segment you want to watch. I'm not going to be disappointed if you skip through my channel or my, my video. It's for you. So whatever is helpful for you guys, go for and do it. Okay, let's go ahead and pull up the, the spreadsheet. Um, let me make sure I'm on the right page. I always go through the recent form tab. This is where I kind of hold all of the data for optimal lineup, the $5 winning GPP lineup, or the big GPP that I, en I enter, uh, as well as you know all the other stats that you might want to see. I have DraftKings points here in column O, so keep that in mind. Um, you can you can see all of the guys here, and you can make your own you make your own analysis based off of what you see there. But first things first, let's go over the winning lineup. There was a tie at the top of of this. Um, the $5 GPP on DraftKings what, I, Drive the Green I can't remember if that's what the tournament's called but um, the first place guy it ended up being a, a share off after the last hole uh, Brendan Steele bogeyed it moved from third to fourth a tie for fourth guys that were in fifth place moved up to become I think that's what it is right yeah uh, guys that were in fifth place moved up to become fourth and so second place had some of those golfers and got a little additional points off of it it bumped them up to tie the first place guy and so now they share first so one guy loses thirty thousand another guy gains thirty thousand they both made seventy thousand on the on those lineups so here we go we'll talk about it um i have it right here so you guys aren't confused uh anything that has the red font will be the lineup number two Anything that's just highlighted in this blue color will be lineup number one. And then anything that has a little tick mark uh, will be the optimal lineup. So let's go over the the, the lineup number two. He had Sung JM, Byung Hun An, Daniel Berger, Cameron Davis, Harris English, and Charles Schwartzel. Lineup number one also had Sung Jay, but then went with Tommy Fleetwood, Lee Westwood, Russell Henley, Wyndham Clark, and Robbie Shelton, which I think is a fantastic lineup like i don't think a lot of people were thinking about putting those guys together so that was pretty good pretty uh i mean he again he was winning the tournament for the longest time so both of them scored 472 and a half points the optimal lineup scored 509 and a half points and you can see it was sung jay mckenzie hughes tommy fleetwood um daniel berger brennan Steele, and mark hubbard you could easily mix and match a lot of these uh, these points here with the salary. So obviously you just you know look at the points, find someone close to their salary, mix and match. There were plenty of ways to score more more points than lineup one and two, because um, there was enough gap between the optimal lineup and those. So there was there was the opportunity to actually uh, take down that five dollar. It wasn't it wasn't perfect, but this tournament was difficult. Like it was really difficult. It was a lot of fun to watch. Um, a lot of drama. And that's kind of what we kind of anticipated with the whole uh, the course being tough and the 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 conditions being also tough, you know, with wind and everything. Okay, now that we went through recent form, let's go over the DK page. 
And what I want to start out with right away is the tea times. Because when there's weather, when we anticipate weather being a huge factor, most of the DFS industry is trying to... I mean, it worked once, but what they're really trying to do is, hey, stack the PM wave, stack the AM wave, stack, you know, whatever, however you want to stack them. That's probably going to be beneficial because if one split gets worse weather than the other, you can almost bet that they're going to be missing the cut far more often than, you know, the the opposite wave. Um, But as you can tell, that really wasn't the case at this tournament. Uh, you have a mix of morning and PM waves, or to say AM and PM waves. Um, there's five golfers right there. I guess I can count six. And then if you count in between, you're going to get two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's pretty even split. Uh, and that goes into 11th place. So really, T times, I'm going to go ahead and throw the filter on. Uh, and then we can hide. Oh, yeah, that's right. We can go ahead, hide shots gain T T or uh T time. What I should say this, I'm gonna I'm gonna hide some of this information. If you feel so inclined, go ahead, pause the video, take a screenshot, whatever, and then we can continue going through. But as of right now, I'm hiding all of this information right here. Because I don't find a lot of it to even be worthy to talk about. You can look at odds, I don't care. Uh world golf ranking, it didn't really didn't really matter. Didn't apply, didn't look like it. Um so before we get into actually no nah, we here let me pull up my my player pool because that's the one thing i do want to talk talk about and this is a review video so let's go ahead and talk about what i was looking for in as or for players shots gained approach and birdie or better course history some bermuda average decent and then the last two are my bucket score systems uh, one to four last year ones, one to three last year twos. So let's go ahead and let's let's look at let's just look at the bucket scores first, because I think that that's easier to get through and maybe a little bit more relevant. Uh, so one to th- one to four last year ones, we have Tommy Fleetwood and Lee Westwood. So there you go. There's one and two, uh, and then we wanted one to three last year twos, and sure enough, we do have that. Um, in this column over here, it's, I mean, the I usually just means interest, but what I ended up doing is this is the ranking of birdie or better in the field. So this is for the field who is best at birdie or better. I was also searching for birdie or better. If you were here in the lineup construction video, I wanted to find golfers who were in 30th or above place for birdie or better. Um, now I'll, I went all the way down to Tommy Fleetwood because I really liked him. I went down to 55 spots. And Tommy Fleet was obviously 54. But I went down that far because I liked Tommy Fleetwood for this tournament. And there was all the, the right cases as to why you would want to. Um, so, I, as you can see, you know, there were some that aren't ranked. And that's because they fell outside of that top 55 or they didn't have enough stats to provide a score, but you could make a lineup with everyone that's in that uh, inside that top 30 mark for birdie or better. Uh, I mean, I can just highlight all the golfers right now. You can see, I'm gonna I'm gonna include 36. You can go ahead and look at all the salaries. You can construct lineups that way, and they probably would have uh, beaten. Um, yeah, I don't have a way to do it, but they would have beaten the $5 GPP. And I should have probably went a little bit more in on this, but I ended up not. Um, I was more or less focused on trying to find all the last year buckets and, and going with that. Um, and again, you can watch a lineup construction video to see how I did that. But I mean, my system wasn't very, very bad this week. I shouldn't say very bad. It was pretty good. Because uh, you could have easily been on those golfers. Mackenzie Hughes, maybe not. Uh, I was on Lee Westwood. I like Lee Westwood. I did play some Cameron Davis just because he was a good price point and he fit and seemed like a decent up and coming golfer. Um, so yeah, there we go with the, the bucket scores, the last year ones, last year twos. We wanted some course history. It uh, just some didn't mean need to be decent. Didn't mean to be good. But as you can see, for the most part, it was good. It was, it was decent, 
decent um, course history. Uh, what was the last the other one that we wanted to look at? Bermuda average. Okay. Let's go ahead and go over the Bermuda average. I'm going to go ahead and hide this information again. Again, you know, take a, take a look at all the other stat categories here. If you think that it's important, you know, obviously study it and come up with your own conclusion. But recent form looked pretty good. Got golfers that are coming in with decent recent form. I mean, one guy came in with a missed cut recent form. Uh, that was Mackenzie Hughes. Everyone else, pretty darn good until Russell Henley. But everyone was, you know, decent recent form. So something to consider. Here we go with the Bermuda events. Sung J M won 33.92. I don't remember what that was in the field. I'll go ahead and sort this pretty soon, but we'll just go over these players right now uh, and then get back to that. 30.77% of finding the top 10 at Bermuda golf courses. So Sung J M likes that Bermuda grass. 11 and a half for the 2020 Bermuda stats. Mackenzie Hughes, not the greatest, but he did win the RSM Classic, which was a Bermuda track. So obviously he must be one of those golfers that, you know, is is fighting something, fighting a swing thing or a putting thing or whatever, where he's been so bad for so long. For him to come back and, you know, put everything together, that's kind of a I don't know. Like again, he's a he's a winner. He's won. Maybe not the strongest of fields uh, when he won, but still, he is a winner. Um, but yeah, the, the Bermuda stats, he's really the only oddball in this whole thing. Everyone else has decent Bermuda stats as we scroll down here. Um, yeah, Sung J33, Tommy Fleetwood was the best in the field for Bermuda, so that doesn't make, like, that's not surprising. Uh, Daniel Berger had been playing pretty terrible as of late, but. It seems like he's over his injury. He seems like he's back on track to being a good golfer. So, you know, that's no surprise. 12.2% finding the top 10. That's good. Young Hun An, 24% finding the top 10. That's good. Brennan Steele, he'd been playing bad for a little while as well. But 10% not bad. And he plays pretty well at the Honda Classic. Westwood, 25%. Gary Woodland, 21.7%. Russell Henley, 17%. Like those, these are all pretty good. And again, like the Bermuda average pretty decent uh, so really can't complain there um i'm going to yeah i'll go ahead and hide this information as well oh no 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 no. we were gonna sort by bermuda so let's do that we can look at all the top golfers here for bermuda you can see you know all the golfers that missed the cut the cut so it was that was difficult this is difficult to look at and say hey we want a decent bermuda when all these golfers here this is your top 20 in Bermuda looking at this right now. And the golfer, like a lot of these golfers did not do well. I would say this though, we could take out Victor Hovland. I know this is like picking out things, but I never really feel confident with golfers who have less than four um, events under their belt. But I'm also going to go ahead and do that. In fact, if you wanted to get rid of all of the light red, which doesn't give you, I, 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 there's the winner, obviously, um, and third place. Yeah, maybe we can't do that. Again, like I said, four events or less. I did say less than four, but I'm going to go ahead and just say four or less. Difficult to to be confident with their Bermuda stats or any kind of other grass stats at that matter. But yeah, Sung JM won the, won the golf event. You, you needed Sung J in your optimal lineup. You also need Tommy Fleetwood. And if we scroll down here, we're going to get to all the other guys too. So here are all your fourth place guys. Um, if I went from Luke Donald up, this would be your top 34 golfers of Bermuda. So that is definitely way less than half of the field. Um, so, you know, it's probably your top 25% golfers at, for Bermuda. So that was something to look at. It was definitely something I found to be important. Um, I don't think I really need to keep going through this, but here you go with, you know, sorting it by top 10 percentage. That is, again, the percentage they finish inside the top 10 at a Bermuda course. Uh, we can go ahead and, and look at this. That's pretty good. 2020 Bermuda stats for this tournament actually looked really good. I was really high on, on Denny McCarthy, and he missed the cut. He did not look good. He could not hit a green. But if he did, he made the putt. So that, that, that worked in our favor. Uh, let's go ahead and hide this. And now we have all the swing stats. We wanted to look at approach, so let's go ahead and sort by approach the correct way uh i'm gonna go ahead okay here are all the golfers that didn't have enough stats 
to, um, you know, they didn't have enough tournaments to apply for stats or to for the PGA to determine stats. But you can see here, uh, Lee Westwood, really the only golfer that stands out. Schwartzel was a part of a winning lineup. But I'm going to go ahead and hide all the blanks just so you can see most of them missed the cut. Um, okay, go ahead and get rid of the blanks. And now we have approach from top to bottom. These are your best golfers for approach. And honestly, it doesn't look good. Uh, I think it was a shots gained approach plus birdie or better. So we can use column I to match up with column AJ. Uh, I shouldn't say column I, it's column a M. Uh, to go with shots gained approach. And again, I'm looking for golfers that are within the 35, 36, you know, somewhere around there and under to go along with the top shots gained approach. And sure, I can find one guy to like make my lineup. There's Sung Jay also. Um, I mean, perhaps maybe we go top 30 of approach to go with top 30 with birdie or better. And really, I think it should be top 40. So if I went, is this top 40? This might be a little bit more. 42. Sure. I, I'm just going to cherry pick those stats just because Byung Hanan's down here. But we can go top 40 uh, approach with top 40 birdie or better. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that my ranking over here, again, does match the birdie or better. Uh, and you had one, two, three, four, five golfers that I think you could easily make a lineup out of. You might not have been able to. That could be a lie. I mean, that leaves you uh, 7,100 left. So yeah, you can make a lineup with, with these guys right here. Should have thought about it. Oh, no, 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 not Nick Motney. Yeah, this wouldn't have given you. That's 5,000 left. So either way, you would have to have you know, dropped one to find another. But it was, it was top 30 golfers that we wanted to find, um, I guess, from Wierenski up. Oh, we can look right here. 36. So 36 up, I mean, you can see there's enough golfers there for you to make a lineup. And again, that's what we were looking for. We just had to find the right guys. So really, this could have been your player pool right here, which is probably a little too much. You know, 36 golfers. Um, maybe if I do this in the, in the future, I'm going to take these 36 golfers with their bucket combination and create a lineup based off of what I see in the bucket combination. And that probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, I would have wanted Tommy Fleetwood again. He didn't have enough stats or you didn't have enough tournaments under his belt to um, create stats through the PGA. So difficult to go with that one. But just want to let you guys see this. There's your birdie or better. Um, I'm going to hide. Let's go ahead and hide this one around the green. I guess here. Let me just go through all of them for you really quickly. Uh, I'm just going to say... Go ahead, take a snapshot. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but Tita Green looked pretty good. You had, you know, Benny Ann, Tommy Fleetwood, Gary Woodland, Daniel Berger, Harris English. Uh, off the tee, had a pretty decent amount inside the top 20 once again. Uh, this wasn't so much the same as in 2019. That, that wasn't the case then, but you've got five golfers there in the top 10 or top 20. Uh, approach, that was just one that did not apply this week. Um, not at least for the top 20 that is again we're just looking at top 20 stats so around the green top 20 was there you'd find some guys Mackenzie Hughes was up there that's that's interesting to see uh putting stats look at that holy moly I didn't anticipate seeing so many golfers with good putting stats inside the top 20 but that was almost that was almost more important stat than uh 40 or better Green and reg didn't really matter. Uh, you, you could find some guys. Maybe it gives you a bit more confidence playing Tommy Fleetwood. Um, but yeah, Furyk, Connors, all disappointments. Or both of those were disappointments. Proximity. Hey, that's interesting to see. Sungjae, Brennan Steele, Luke Donald, and Russell Henley. Not bad. Yeah, but I was I was more on, on birdie or better. And I mean, it might not even look that good for, to you guys. He could have made the cut. He looked bad. He withdrew. Um, I don't remember what happened to uh, Zin Jun Zhang. Chesson kind of was riding streaky form coming into this, so I didn't feel that comfortable. Liu Yu Stazen might be one of the biggest disappointments of the week because I thought he was really good. I played him in my one and done. I played him and Benny Ann, so like 
you know, Benny Ann giving me a fourth place. That felt pretty good. But no Sung Jay, obviously. Okay, so there's your birdie or better. We're going to go ahead and hide this information um, and then show you kind of. Uh, I, we can go through this as well. The driving distance. Um, did driving distance matter? You had a lot of people. You have less missed cuts for driving distance than you do for any of the other stats. And you got you have a bunch of guys here in the top 20. Top 11, actually. Uh, driving accuracy? Eh. How about good drive percentage? Sure. Five golfers again inside the top 20. Of, that, of a stat. You know, of that one. We brought in uh, basically bo bogey avoidance this week, and we can take a look to see how that fared. Um, it wasn't bad. Didn't get you the winner, but it got you some golfers that maybe you wouldn't have played, like Harris English uh, or Bryce Garnett. That's crazy, man. I couldn't play Bryce Garnett. I was like, there's no way it, for him to get in 11th place. That's nuts. And Maverick McNeely, um, if you guys were listening to my... Um, not listening, but if you're watching my Twitter, I, I had said just finding all the Bermuda guys plus Maverick McNeely dot 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 question mark. Like, wasn't sure why I wanted to play him that much, but he was a last year one, really good with birdies, really good with uh, bogey avoidance. This is make birdie or make bogey percentage. So this is how often they make a bogey. A lot of holes under his belt. Oh, I'm sorry. It's right here. A lot of holes under his belt. I play him at 13 and a half or 13.8%. There's Denny again. I played him at 28. That's I played him the most. Um, Ryan Harmon again I liked. Ricky Fowler disappointed. Uh, Gary Willen pretty decent. Russell Knox. I don't know. I, I, I'm almost at that point where I just don't want to play any more Russell Knox. He's just so disappointing. Um, but yeah. That was all for the stats. I don't have anything else really to talk about when it comes to that. It's really interesting to see all these sixes here uh, that were within inside the top 10. I knew, I had mentioned in, in the lineup construction video that this might be a week where the sixes actually find, they're going to find more sixes in there. Um, primarily because, I guess, we'll start with the sixes. You know, I always like to look at these, these combinations and see which golfers are up there. Um, you can see... A, Official world golf ranking. We have a bunch of really good golfers that are within this bucket. When when we do these bucket system videos or when I go through the bucket system, I will say, okay, a six doesn't really show up inside the top 10 all that often. But we also have to look at the players to determine how much more confidence we have in either fading or playing or how much, you know, how less of confidence. So seeing Gary Woodland, Daniel Berger, and Byung-Hun Ann, just those three golfers. I know JT Poston was doing well for a while, but just the three golfers I mentioned earlier, I really like those golfers coming in without even knowing what the buckets were. And I, I probably played a little less Gary Woodland than I would have just because he was a six. I probably played less, uh, a little less Byung-Hun Ann. I don't even remember what my ownership percentages were. Okay. So... 4% for JT Poston, I think. So 9.5% for Byung Hanan. That's not really that good. I probably should have played him a little bit more. Um, but either way. Here, how about this? Let's go through all of the last year buckets. And we will sort by uh, finishing position. And really what I would want you guys to focus on is uh, the birdie or better ranking over here. And just look to see, you know, in the future, this is what we should probably go with. Um, there you go. So you had five guys finish inside the top 20, one guy really close to finishing inside the top 20, quite a bit of missed cuts. I mean, this was the biggest, uh, the biggest pool of golfers to choose from was the last year ones. Um, but yeah, these guys real close to getting top 10 finishes, which would really boost that, that bucket once again. But these guys fell just outside of it. Uh, let's go ahead and look at two. Uh, we had three golfers inside the top 11. Um, I wouldn't say a lot of missed cuts, but really the one that irks me is is Denny McCarthy. That really kind of gets under my skin. I played, I don't know how much I actually played of, of Brandon Steele. So six lineups out of like 94, I think I had. Um, again, it was Denny McCarthy and Brian Harmon 
who were my golfers and you can see the highlights over here those were the guys that i really liked out of this this bucket but you know again go with that birdie or better and you're gonna find some good plays okay so last year threes um you know, didn't really find a lot inside the top 10. Russell Henley, that was kind of interesting. He is not uh, a birdie getter. I mean, I remember Russell Henley was the most aggressive golfer in the PGA Tour. And this was, I think, two years ago. So it was like, a, I don't know how he was ranked that way. But he was even told that when he was leading, gosh, I don't remember what tournament it was. But he was leading a tournament. And they're like, did you know you're the most aggressive golfer when it comes to going going for par fives and two and he, or just always shooting for the pin or something like that. And he laughed. He goes, I did not know that. Maybe I should change my game. I think he said something like that. Um, but yeah, he, he, he is a streaky guy. He will get a lot of birdies, but I'm sure he'll get a lot of bogeys as well. Uh, let's see what his, I mean, Hey, I was, I was off. He didn't, he does not make a lot of bogeys. Um, that's really interesting to see. Uh, anyways, you guys can take a snapshot of this. Uh, this bucket wasn't that big. You had 20 golfers in it, five golfers you could have really lived with and not for a lot of, you know, the salary wasn't that high. Um, so yeah. Last year fours, you had Sung Jay obviously in there uh, and you had so many birdie getters, uh, which I, I was all over. Uh, let's see what my ownership percentages were. So 14% 14, 14 for Bronson Bragoon. That's pretty sad. I'm just going to highlight all of my top guys. Uh, yeah, I'll highlight that one as well. So here you go. It was I played Sungjae quite a bit. I played Harold Varner quite a bit. Joaquin Neiman. He looked... His his TD Green game was terrible. Uh, Russell Knox, Bronson Bragoon. And Bronson Bragoon because of his birdie making skills. But he did withdraw, so I don't know what it was for. He could have been playing terrible. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, Nick Watney, I would have played him for sure. Um, I mean, I think I did a little bit, but he, you know, 12th in the field for making birdie or better 6,900, pretty darn good. Cameron Davis, uh, not enough stats that, or he just wasn't good. Yeah, uh, he, he wasn't good. Cause we already, we still have it sorted. That's the other thing I forgot to actually add my bad guys. So I don't have all the stats. Okay. So some of those other fields that we were talking about are a little bit bigger. Because I, I do believe like the threes had Brooks Kepka in it. Um, I'm not going to go back. But I'm going to make this faster. We're not going to continue talking uh, about these buckets. So there you go. Let's go ahead and go to the fives. We already looked at the sixes. So this is our last group. Um, and your top birdie guys. Like if you just went strictly by birdies, you know, for a lot of these groups, you would have been okay. Especially if you made a lot of lineups. You know, if you had 10 or less lineups, it might have been a little bit more difficult. But for the most part... It's not bad. So hopefully you guys did well this week. I will have a preview video for the Arnold Palmer tomorrow. Um, I'm already somewhat, I, I've, I've finished quite a bit um, of that. So I, I should have it a little earlier than usual. Um, I, I would love to get it out tonight, but I'm not positive really how I can ensure that the golfers are going to all still be in the field by the time monday rolls around i always like to give that one day just to make sure if anyone's like eh, i'm gonna withdraw i don't i'm not gonna play in this this tournament or whatever and then we get an alternate that goes in or whatever um but it is an invitational so i don't think we have any monday qualifiers for it uh which is nice so we don't have to worry about like a tuesday or a wednesday adjustment to what we have to go with but either way we'll talk more about that in the preview video Again, I hope you guys did well. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you tomorrow. All right, bye.